Good evening, family and friends of Bonner Springs Church of the Nazarene. Welcome again on this Wednesday evening. Very windy Wednesday, I might add. I hope that uh, you didn't get blown away today. I know when I was out um, trying to go run an errand, my, I could hardly keep my car on the, my little hot rod, my Toyota Prius, hardly keep it on the road. It was blowing so strong and hard, but we made it. We survived, so I hope that you're being safe as well, and I hope you're staying um, warm inside, even though the temperature wasn't too bad today. So grateful for that. Absolutely. Well, welcome on this Wednesday night, and uh, here it is, November the 18th, November 18, Wednesday night, and um, glad that you're you're with us. If you're joining us tonight, please give us another like, uh, give us a comment, let us know that you're watching. We really appreciate that uh, so very much, um, and trust it's a blessing to you as well as it helps our algorithms, and thank you all for joining us on Sunday and bearing with us as we finally figured out what our issue was with the uh, poor recordings that we've had the last couple of weeks, that it, it was finally, our camera finally gave up the ghost and died, so we're working on it, we're trying to get that replaced and replenished, but um, we're, we're glad that we at least had, we fall, fell back on our phone, my personal phone that we had sitting on the stand at church, and at least we got it, we got it to where it was at least uh, not annoying to listen to and to watch, so the picture was better and sound was better so we're glad that we got that figured out and we have our we have our guy that's working with us on the, the camera situation so hopefully uh, we'll have we'll have something figured out uh, here very soon I'm not, I I want to say by this Sunday but we may have to go back to the phone again this week but however the case is just so you know we're working on it we're trying to get there for that but so thank you again and appreciate you checking in with us. So just give us a like, a wave, or whatever. I think some of that, you, it comes with a wave. You can you can do that for us, and we appreciate that. We will try to reply uh, to any and all that we can as you uh, leave, give us messages and reply to us. So thank you once again, and we appreciate that. Now, um, as we look forward to this coming Sunday, we'll be, we'll be at church. Uh, in person, and I know the uh, the new restrictions that came out for the state, and that it, the churches and schools are exempt. However, if you feel more safe uh, in not coming and just continuing to watch at home, please feel free to do that. We don't want to put anybody in jeopardy. We don't want anybody feeling guilty or bad about having to come or feeling uncomfortable about coming. But uh, we know that a lot of us feel like we can continue like we've been doing with the rows separated and trying to wear, wear our masks and our hand sanitizers and uh, doing, doing the social distancing that we can. So we want to we want to try to in, encourage that, keep encouraging that, that we will continue to do that. So, but I did get a couple of calls from folks who uh, told me they probably wouldn't be back until it's more safe, until cases are down and that sort of thing. So, and if that's the way you feel, perfectly fine. We, we don't want anybody to be uncomfortable, so you follow follow your own guidelines that'd be great we appreciate that and we're doing our best to follow the guidelines that are out there for our county and for our state and so we're we want to be responsible and act responsibly as well so and we're still looking at it so things things can change but we right now we're going to continue as we have and uh, just encourage everybody to be uh, respectful of other people's decisions and uh, other people's space as well so thank you very much. Appreciate it. And uh, and so with that in mind, just letting you know about our normal activities, the ladies uh, Bible study that usually meets on Wednesday night, they will not be meeting tonight, but uh, I think they've already set up a date for the next meeting, like uh, is it next week, the 9th or something like that of December to meet together. So that'll be, uh, that'll be happening then uh, until they decide on another Bible study, they finished the one they were in, so that that will be, it's kind of like on hold, so just pay attention, those of you who are in that group, and uh, they'll be they'll be back together again. And then, of course, Sunday morning at 8.45 is a Bible study led by Jerry Poe and Charles Smith as they lead that together. Uh, Jerry Poe, the main, main one teaching right now, but uh, that's by Zoom, so you'll need to let us know if you'd like to join that so we can send you the information and you can join that by Zoom, that class. Bible study. It's adult Bible study. 
Um, so, and then of course, uh, Monday night, Bible study led by Pastor Barb, going through the book of Psalm, and that's at six o'clock on Monday night, and that's uh, virtually by Zoom and in person as well. So uh, that's kind of a split split deal that they're doing. So remember those things. And of course, here we are on Wednesday night at six o'clock for our, our devotional. And I don't know, maybe next week might be, uh, we might not be having it next week. So just kind of let, let you know ahead of time that not to be uh, disappointed if you get on and we're not on because of uh, the holiday with family coming in and everything, we may be preoccupied. So, and we haven't having all of our kids be together this year, which would be the first time in uh, like eight years, but uh, only one so far has not been able to come. So uh, because of the COVID restrictions. So anyhow, just letting you know that with family in town, we may not be uh, doing it next Wednesday because of Thanksgiving <clears throat> time. But anyway, and then of course our service on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock and we'll continue to do it live, live streaming as well. And uh, <clears throat> we appreciate you checking in with us and doing that. And then those of you who are faithful givers to continue to either send it in in the mail. Some of you do that. Some of you send it in online by these tabs or, uh, or if you're there in person to put it in the box and that's, that's fine as well. And we appreciate that. Thank you for your generosity. Your continued support helps us in so many ways. And we are so grateful for that. I want to bring a couple things to your attention uh, this coming Sunday, those of you who would like to show up after the service is over, this coming Sunday, uh, Susie and Carrie are going to uh, coordinate and organize the group that stays afterwards to kind of do some Christmas decoration for the church like we normally do. And uh, I, I, I've been really pressing them to, to not do decorations if people don't come to help. So if you come and it's not decorated, then you have to say, well, I guess nobody showed up to help. So it's up to you. They're going to have that available this Sunday after church for decorations. If you'd like to be a part of that, then they would like to have you. And it would help the church to look a little more festive and a little more in the season of Advent and Christmas as we look forward to, uh, to getting ready for Advent and the Christmas season. So that's going to happen this Sunday right after church is over to gather and decorate the church. Another thing we're going to be doing again this year, we're going to try to do that, try to do this. We've done it now for several years, is to have a um, help some needy needy folks and some folks of our own that are part of our church. We haven't gotten any requests from outside the church yet, but uh, we usually work together and partner with um, Twisters Bar and Grill as they help uh, their employees do stuff to help us helping families with Christmas. I haven't heard from the, I did give them word they're checking to see if they want to be a part of that this year but uh, we're going to try to do something if we can and so we have we have about three three families that we are going to try to help and if you'd like to be a part of that please uh, contact Susie or myself so we can get you on the list and we have we're get it, we're gathering a list of needs and wishes and and uh, sizes and all that kind of thing so uh, we appreciate your help with that. So if you'd like to help us with that, the Angel Tree, we have an opportunity to give gifts to families that, that need it, that will not have um, a Christmas or much of a Christmas at all if we don't help them. So we're, we want to do that. So if you'd like to be a part of that, you can give money or, or ask for a list and we can give you that so you can buy gifts for them. So that'd be a help. Appreciate you helping us in that endeavor. Thank you so very much. Well, let's go on tonight. As for our devotional, I would like to invite you to the book of 2 Corinthians is where I've been led to tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And um, it's really interesting because um, when I look at chapter 5, it kind of ties in with the previous chapter, chapter 4. You can go back and, and look at all of what chapter 4 is about, about um, having the same spirit of faith. We also believe and therefore speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. And this is for your benefit, Paul says in verse 15 of chapter 4, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Then in verse 16 of chapter 4, he, he says, Therefore, 
we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That's the way he ends chapter 4, that we fix our eyes. That's, that's interesting. That it, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes on what is seen, not on what is seen. I keep getting mixing that up. Not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Then we pick up chapter 5, and he talks about that we're waiting for our new bodies. For we know that if, if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we were in this tent, while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God. You want to check the camera there, Derek? Sorry about that, folks. My wife got, uh, she's looking at the, at the Bible and didn't notice that it was falling. So, <laughs> hopefully. So, notice what it says there. That the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, this is verse 6 of chapter 5, Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith. I think it's moving again. <laughs> For we live by faith, not by sight. If you want to underline verse 7, that's a very critical verse. In the midst of all of this, going clear back, that we do not lose heart, though outwardly we're wasting away, inwardly, for light and momentary. So we fix our eyes on things that are not seen, but on what is seen. Because what's unseen, and then he, then he, he comes along here and and, and talks about this, that it's the one who fashioned us for this very purpose, guaranteeing what is to come. We're always confident. How are we confident? We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord, so we make it our goal to please Him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Wow. Isn't that something? Interesting, isn't it? Well, it just that, that verse, and I just want to emphasize that verse 7 to kind of remind us of where we are. In the midst of all of this, all these things that are happening sufferings and persecutions and all this stuff that's happening to Paul and telling us that what we're waiting for, for we live, it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we live by faith, not by sight. And he's connecting with what he said back in chapter 4, verse 16. Verse 16, remember we, we read that a little bit ago? Therefore, we do not lose heart, Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We live by faith, not by sight. 
<laughs> I, I can't emphasize that enough. And those of you who know me, when I preach and I like to say this is something I would stamp on your forehead or in your heart, I would. this is that phrase. We, for we live by faith, not by sight. And you know uh, that life, metaphorically speaking, is a journey. It's a journey. Life is a journey. And our faith is a journey. And our life, life is a journey that everybody takes. Everybody, it's a journey every person who has ever lived has taken. It has a beginning and it has a final destination, this journey. And if you have been born or if you have come into existence, then you must take this journey of life. You must. However, how a person takes this journey is not unavoidable because there are options in how we take the journey. There are, there are choices. There are choices for us that can be made, and, and the choices influence the quality and destination of the journey. The choices that we make influence the quality and the destination of the journey. And, and the choices that we make on our journey through life are controlled by what we believe about life. And especially what we believe about the ultimate meaning and purpose of life. I think all of us can agree with that so far, right? And these beliefs are, are born of faith in what we cannot see. Our beliefs are born in faith in what we cannot see, rather than in what we can see. So this journey that we're on is a walk of faith. The journey we're on is a walk of faith, not sight. And the reason for this is that we can't see the source of the journey. We can't see the source of the journey. We can't see who or what set up the journey of life that we must take, whether we want to or not. We can't see the source. We don't know where it came from. We don't know who set it up. We, we don't know. Okay, we can't, we can't see that, that part. We don't, so we take the journey by faith, and we walk this journey by faith, not by sight. So it makes sense then that everyone that's on this journey of life must live by faith, not by sight. So it's not just a not just a Christians, it's not just the Christians who can't see the source of the journey. No one, no one can see the source of the journey. I think we can all agree with that. No one can see that. And although the Apostle Paul in our in this passage of 2 Corinthians, although the Apostle Paul had Christians in mind when he wrote our verse for today in this passage, his wisdom applies to everybody. His wisdom applies to everybody. Everybody lives by faith, not by sight. So, everyone must live by faith. It's, it's just a question of which faith. It's just a question of which faith. And since the ultimate source of the journey of life cannot be seen, then we must place our faith in that which we believe to be the source of life. In that which we believe to be the source of life's ultimate meaning and purpose. So, if our journey through life is to be successful, then it's very essential that we place our faith in that which is the true source of the journey, in that which has actually defined the ultimate meaning and purpose of life. And from the biblical perspective, there's only one possible option in this regard, right? We must place our faith in the God of the Bible, and we must not place our faith in an idol, that is, a, a God substitute that we make up on our own. We create it on our own, right? So we must surrender 
in faith to that which is the actual source of life and not rebel against him and surrender in faith to that which we have propped up in his place. <laughs> that's where we are. And that's what the Apostle Paul knew. And that's why he said, for we live by faith, not by sight. But it depends on which faith we're leaning on. Depends on which faith we're leaning on. And I'm I, I it's very important that we take the biblical perspective that there's only one possible option, and that's to place our faith in the God of the Bible. That's that's where our faith is, that we have that. Because and not in not in some idol or some God that we've created ourselves. Because either way, however, we will be living by faith and not by sight. And I want, to, I want to trust the way that's been proven down through the ages. Because the, he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Will be the same. He never changes. <laughs> now he may have us change our methods, but he never changes. I'm glad for that, aren't you? So we live by faith. I'd rather live by faith in that than to live by faith in something I, that has no history or a faith that has no uh, verifiable outcome than to trust God, trusting in Him, because He knows the way. So we live by faith, not by sight. And I'm glad that I can trust Him to lead me all the way. So regardless of what's happening around me in the world, whatever... What, regardless of how society wants to shun God and turn away from Him and turn to their own self-made gods, my faith is not there because that doesn't prove anything. That, that has proven nothing but sorrow and hardship and disappointments. But in Christ, there's no disappointment. So my faith, I'm living by faith, living by faith, not by sight. May God help us to take that word tonight and to fix our eyes on things that are not seen, but on what is unseen that's been proven through the years and know that God will lead us all the way. Aren't you glad for that this evening? Well, and when I was thinking about that this evening, a, a song popped into my head and I couldn't get it out of my head. And I know I, do, I don't want to come and sing to you every week. I don't want to do that. But there's a song that just, it's an old song that came out of the hymn book that popped into my head that just, it just resonated with me. And I, I want you to sing it with me. And I'm going to, since I can't remember all the words to it, I'm, I've got the hymn book and I'm going to, uh, I want to sing it. You can sing it with me. All right. I think you'll remember it. Here it goes. All the way my Savior leads me, what have I to ask beside? Can I doubt His tender mercy, who through life has been my guide? Heavenly peace, divinest comfort, here by faith in Him to dwell. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. For I know whate'er befall me, Jesus doeth all things well. All the way my Savior leads me, cheers each winding path I tread. Gives me grace for every trial, feeds me with the living bread. Though my weary steps may falter, and my soul a thirst may be, gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. Gushing from the rock before me, lo, a spring of joy I see. All the way my Savior leads me, oh, the fullness of His love. 
Perfect rest to me is promised in my Father's house above. When my spirit, clothed in mortal wings, its flights to worlds unknown, this my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. This my song through endless ages, Jesus led me all the way. <laughs> Aren't you glad you can depend on that? We live by faith, not by sight. Why? Because Jesus leads us all the way, and we can trust him to do just that. Right? Let's pray. Father God, thank you again for your word to us. Thank you that it speaks to us right where we are and where we live. And you know exactly what we need right now. So Lord, I just pray that you would come and give us the calm assurance that we will keep our hand in yours and know that you will lead us every step of the way, regardless of what's out there. We don't have to fear the coronavirus. We will take whatever precautions we need to, but we don't fear it because you're leading us. And you will guide us, safely guide us. Lord, I pray that those who are suffering, those who have contracted it, those who have symptoms, even those that we know that have it, I just pray that, Lord, you would reach down and comfort them and touch them, touch their bodies, give them the healing that they need that only you can give, I pray. And, Lord, those who are still waiting in the balances and those who have been tested and waiting and in quarantine, I pray that you would be with them and be the calm assurance that they need tonight as well. I ask, Lord, that you would just give us direction and give us discernment. May we know how to follow where you want us to do what we need to do in carrying out the ministry of the church, in carrying out our, our uh, responsibilities as well. That we, don't want to, we don't want to be guilty of anybody being in danger, but we want to gather them and feed souls and lead people to Christ and point them to Christ. Help us to be at our best. I pray for you. I pray for each one who's listening, each one who watches. I just ask you to wrap your arms of grace around them and your love and mercy. And Lord, we just, as we look forward to being together again, that you would bring us back and, and that we would rejoice in your goodness to us. And then look forward to what's ahead in, in life's journey that we're that we're on, that we are living by faith and not by sight. So, thank you, Lord. Now, may we live in that blessing. We ask this in the strong name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us tonight and watching us, and thank you for putting up with us. It's a, it's a joy. So, uh, until we see you on Sunday, whether it's online or in person, on Sunday at 10 o'clock, may the Lord richly bless you and repay you. Take care of yourselves and each other. God bless you.